Don't know how to build a team from scratch or find good teammates? DreamTeam.gg, the ultimate team building platform. Get on fast track to advance from novice to amateur and, if desired, to professional gamer. Join DreamTeam.gg today. Hello everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSGO News. It'll be my last episode of news until my 24-hour CSGO live stream. It will start tomorrow. If you guys are watching this, it's currently Thursday for me. My 24-hour CSGO live stream will be here in America, US Central Time. It will start at 8 or 9 a.m. And so thank you ahead of time for all of you guys who stopped by. Tons of viewer games, matchmaking, hopefully ranking up as well, 1v1s, tons of giveaways. I'll be announcing all my sponsors for that as well at the back half of today's episode. So thank you all ahead of time for all of you guys who actually stopped by that. I cannot wait to do it and hopefully I do survive and we have some fun doing it as well. On top of that though, I do want to talk about our first story today, all about CSGO and other esports gambling out there, as we do have many governments out there making progress towards banning all of it. Now, back in November, I, I mentioned this in a CSGO News episode, we actually had the Belgian Prime Minister try and target loot boxes in-game. That, of course, was Star Wars Battlefront, their loot boxes as well, though he did take steps to progress, of course, towards cases in CSGO. Cases in CSGO being probably one of the most popular cases in the esports scene today. He he called them and labeled them as loot boxes, but don't, don't you know, dry that short guys he was trying to target loot boxes in battlefront cases in csgo other games out there like call of duty who all have crates as well he was targeting all of those kind of rounding them all up to though into the label known as loot boxes on top of that though his overall enforcement was to try and actually activate these rules of course enforce these rules or some kind of uh, the policies to actually protect kids from this in-game gambling so we have many government officials out there trying to label in-game cases loot boxes crates as gambling what do you guys think about that i myself personally believe that yes you could consider CSGO cases to be gambling. If you look at the rates, we've had many people out there, many YouTubers and streamers and popular people make YouTube videos about the CSGO cases and how rigged they are. I do actually see it as a form of gambling. You're opening a crate, you're paying money for it, and you don't know what you're going to get that's a gamble. That's a risk you're taking. So I do agree with them on that standpoint. We also have progress though. Not so so much for Belgium, but actually Danish countries out there. Denmark actually announcing yesterday as well. They're actually targeting ISPs or internet service providers to go ahead and block these sites out there that have invalid gaming or gambling licenses. Now this is a huge step in the right direction, although I do want to clarify guys that uh, Denmark has made progress towards this. They're not taking down gambling websites. They're not banning them. They're not you know shutting them down forever. They are though uh, targeting internet service providers in the country of Denmark to actually block these websites and block their users from actually going to the website. So this could hurt CSGO gambling, this could hurt other gambling out there. I'm not really sure of any other games out there that don't have, that actually have the same gambling system as, as CSGO. I know PUBG has a very small scene, but yeah, you wouldn't classify like Battlefront or Call of Duty as, uh, as they don't go to external sites to actually do their gambling, they go to individually inside the game. But this would put a halt to many CSGO gambling sites out there. Allegedly, as of right now, 24 sites have been banned in Denmark. Now, of course, you guys might be saying, Jake, there's still VP VPNs, you can get around this. Yes, you're completely right. In this kind of age where everyone has a VPN, this is definitely a, a big problem. But again, I do want to question you guys as well. This, this is actual progress towards not only Belgium, but also Denmark making great progress towards slowly banning CSGO gambling. What do you guys think about this? I know we're going to have mixed comments out there. Is it good for the game? Is it bad for the game? In my personal opinion, I've told you guys in the past, Gambling certainly helps player numbers. Without gambling, guys, without having a, a, an economic value for these skins, it would definitely hurt the player base. And so I myself am not like a, not necessarily a fan or supporter of it, but I do think it certainly helps the economy. What do you guys think about this? Leave a comment down below. Let's hop into our next story, though. And I guess speaking of gambling sites being shut down, guys, unfortunately enough, if you guys are fans of Easy Skins, yes, they have actually shut down their site because of Steam banning too many of their bots. Now, we've heard rumors about this in the past of, of Steam banning many bots out there from many other websites. Those websites somehow surviving, though, eSkins, or easy skins that actually reached the end of their lifespan, guys. And I guess all I really have to say about this is this is what you get, Karma, for sponsoring Phantom Lord. On top of that, though, bouncing off, we do have some rumors out there surfacing all around X Optic Alu, also X Phase member. You guys know a, bit, a very big fan favorite out there. We actually have NC Esports tweeting out some pictures of returning to CSGO. If you guys remember, it was actually back in June where they dropped their entire CSGO roster. They had high plans for 2017. They were one of those teams out there who is changing their roster almost every few months, bringing in a lot of new talent, a lot of new players. All of a sudden in June though they dropped their entire roster some hints at their other Twitter though apparently they might be coming back with Alu now Alu not having a team he stood in for other teams out there like Havu in the past of course an ex optic member and still a decent opera out there on the scene people are saying out there there might be rumors uh, you know just rumors for now guys Alu might return to NC Sports he's played for them before and they might base the team around him although these are very just they're, they're rumors guys but again that could be really cool to see Alu back in professional scene and maybe have an entire team based around him what do you guys think about that a fan 
favorite Alu could return to CSGO. And also I'll leave my short comments on this. We had ESCA Mountain Dew League for the European side actually started just yesterday. If you guys don't follow ESCA Mountain Dew League, I definitely suggest it. We have some very good European teams and North American teams in both sides, and I cannot wait for the finals of this season. It's going to be probably the best season so far in terms of competition with a lot of great European teams, a lot of great North American teams dropping down to Mountain Dew League. It's going to be cool to see who competes for the ESL Pro League spot next season. On top of that, though, Virtus Pro handed them themselves their first win in a long time on an online map. It was actually against Flipside Tactics, a 16-5 domination win there. They also had a close match with Team Spirit, 16-12, and even closer match with the, the, the Spanish team uh, known as Movistar, guys, a 16-14 matchup there. They were also handed their first loss, though. So for all of you guys thinking, oh, Virtus Pro might be the next online team, not so much. They actually were handed a devastating defeat on Overpass, 16-3 via Big. Now, if you guys want to know as well, kind of some more disappointing news out there. For all of you guys who were not aware of this, Big just last month actually finalized their roster. I think it was two and a half weeks ago, they added their two newest members, Tizian and Lucker. So that's actually a very new roster there who dominated Virtus Pro 16-3. So don't get your hopes up yet, guys. I still think Virtus Pro changes might be around the horizon. We'll just see what those are. On top of that, though, we also had Optic Gaming finally perform their debut in ESL Pro League, the North American side of things as well. The only Danish flag in the North American side of Pro League, but still, I'm not going to argue, but also I want to forewarn you guys, we're not going to see the, the full Optic talent for a long time because these next two weeks as well, their only matches are against some lower tier North American teams. Besides Cloud9, who they did split a series with, they also swept Complexity. They do look very strong so far. Splitting a series with Cloud9 online, you definitely cannot argue that. Cloud9 looking probably towards your number one or number two North American team right now. Whether they're in front or behind Liquid, we still have yet to decide. So Optic Gaming looking very strong. They start off ESL Pro League 3 and 1. Don't forget though guys, it's a European roster and a North American side of Pro League. And also, their next matches are against Rogue and Ghost Gaming. So again, we're not going to see their full potential for a while until they play the Liquids, the SKs, the Luminosities. Until they play those teams, we're not going to know how good this team truly is. But their debut, you can't argue it guys. Optic debut, they are currently 3 and 1. And also, very last in today's episode of CSGO News, thank you to the CSGO dev gods. They've actually brought us a great update as of last night. I had a few troubles actually getting my update at first. I don't know if you guys had the same issue. It took me two to three tries to actually update CSGO. After doing so, though, we did find out Wingman now has Overwatch mode. So I can't speak from personal preference. I know plenty of friends out there, plenty of Discord members have complained to me about the immense amount of cheaters inside Wingman that will now hopefully be fixed sometime soon. So all you guys who have Wingman or actually Overwatch Wingman unlocked, please do your, do your service, guys. Overwatch on Wingman and find us some cheaters out there and again I know we see many a problem many problems right now currently in matchmaking as well as wingman with plenty of cheaters and hopefully this is a step in the right direction now off of that does want I do actually want to take the time right now to thank all of you guys for watching this week all of the great comments and likes I have my 24 hour stream tomorrow and I am immensely nervous for it I, I just don't know if I'm gonna survive or not so quickly I do want to say as well I'm not really being paid for this 24 hour live stream all these sponsors are actually giving me on-site currency that on-site currency will of course be gambled or bet to actually get skins to do give Away. So I do want to thank these guys immensely though. My first sponsor will be CSGO Fast. My second sponsor will be Daddy Skins. And of course I do have some maybes going on right now. The maybes are actually Drake Moon as well as CSGO Empire and CSGO Frog. They're all currently maybes right now, uh, but I should have at least two sponsors. And again, I won't be doing very much gambling. So if you guys are, are only watching the 24 hour live stream for gambling, I won't be doing much of that at all. I want to kind of focus on 1v1s, viewer games, matchmaking, some fun interaction, and of course opening sticker capsules, doing some more fun stuff where I talk a lot, get to know you guys as well. Well, I'm not a CSGO gambler. I'm not a full-time gambler. I never will be. And so unfortunately enough, I couldn't land that many big sponsors. But still, nonetheless, very thankful to those guys because they do help me out. I can't afford to do giveaway skins myself. So I'm going to have plenty of skins to give away thanks to them. And a, a huge thanks to all of you guys who do stop by. That will be tomorrow morning. And I, again, I'm, I'm just so nervous. Thank you all for watching. I will see you all Saturday. Uh, a couple hours after I end my 24-hour stream, I will have another episode. And that episode will all be about Loot Bear. If you guys don't know Loot Bear, it's all about renting CSGO skins. They've gone ahead and actually given me a, an account for free to use. I'll be showing you guys a video on Saturday of me using the, the renting skins platform known as Loot Bear. And on top of that, next week, guys, I will be doing a Q&A with Loot Bear. So make sure to leave a comment down below all your questions or go to my Twitter. I actually posted a tweet on screen for all of you to reply to with questions. I'll be asking asking their development team all those questions and posting a video of their responses. I want to get, let you guys know right now though, I still am not, I'm kind of weary about the future of renting CSGO skins. Nonetheless though guys, hope you all enjoyed. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all tomorrow. My name is Jake, remember I like you. Goodbye.